All right, so we're gonna be taking a quick look at Sony's brand new FDR-X1000V. Uh, this is their first 4K action camera and it does 4K at 30 frames a second, but you can also switch it to 24 frames a second. And even when you're in the 4K mode on this model, you can actually switch your viewing angle now. So you can switch from wide to be 170 degrees or something more narrow like 120. Uh, previously, the only way we were able to do this was by enabling steady shot. Now we've been using this camera actually for uh, for the past day or two and uh, we've actually jumped into this box and stuff like that so we're not going into this completely blind which is kind of nice because I can bring up a few concerns I have, uh, a few highlights and stuff like that. So I'll just quickly unscrew this here. Probably should have done left that unscrewed. And uh, so the uh, X, sorry what is it, yeah the, the X1000V is actually a little bigger than the AS200 has been in the past, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so we have this brand new case, so if you have the dive front from the old uh, AS100, you're actually going to need to order a new front flat lens for underwater, otherwise we're still going to get that distortion we've had in the past. Uh, the case itself now has the record button on top here, which actually is uh, super legit because now when we go to take photos and stuff like that we're not pushing the camera forward so we should get better photo quality out of it plus all of these buttons on the case actually feel really nice especially compared to previous gen models uh, including the AZ-1 and the uh, AS-100 um, but these buttons are, are great they're super responsive and I'll just take this out of here some of the case aside for now, and we'll take a look at the front LCD screen here. Now you can use any of these buttons to wake up the camera and uh, you'll be all good to go. You can actually press both of them on and it'll turn on the Wi-Fi. Now your Wi-Fi is actually, um, the password for your Wi-Fi is in your manual. Now one of your manuals will have a set of two stickers. One of them is going to look like this and the other one's going to have the name of the camera and the password. I keep that one in the box just in case this one ever sort of rubs off or gets destroyed. Now the way it works is uh, every camera is pre-programmed with a Wi-Fi password and you cannot change it. At least I haven't found a way to change it, but I haven't looked that hard. It just doesn't seem too possible. But once you enter this code into your phone for the first time, uh, your phone will generally save it. The same with the remote. So hopefully you won't have to be re-entering this sort of random but pretty secure password over and over. So that's how you're going to sort of uh, first connect to your Wi-Fi if you can't find the password. Uh, every camera has a default password that is unique to that camera so it's not going to be the same one that you see here. Um, we'll take a look at the top here. Oh actually, no, we do have uh, the sort of similar watch LCD screen that we've had here for uh, pretty much every Sony action camera. So it's the same as before uh, except there's a lot more options. The one big change that uh, keeps throwing me through a loop is uh, loop being in the front. I'm used to being in movie, being able to press previous and it'll be power off but I have to go one more. So I really feel uh, loop should be all the way to the right. And then uh, one thing is when you're going through, there's a ton of new options here, including how to change our uh, field of view. We can change it now from wide at 170 or something a little more medium focused to 120. And you can do that at 4K, you can do that at 720p, 240 frames a second. It really doesn't limit you uh, how you're using it, except when you're uh, enabling a steady shot, which we'll go into in a little bit. But um, when you want to make any changes here, and you go into all these menus, uh, I, I have a tendency to, to switch formats and stuff like that. Now if you're connected to the phone, it'll be much faster. But we'll change our video format here, and I'll want to change it to 4K, and I'll press this button. But then it takes me all the way back to the beginning movie menu. And I kind of want to stay... All, uh, we're low on power, so I'll have to switch out batteries here in a second. Um, actually, yeah, let's do that right now. So I do wish the um, the menus wouldn't always throw you all the way back to the main menu. I wish I could just hold the record button and it would go back to the main menu if I wanted it to. Because usually if I'm changing my format and stuff like that, I have to turn on steady shot and then I have to change my field of view. And then if I have to go back to the main menu every time, it's uh, it, it just takes a lot of time. But for the most part, I'll be using my phone so that won't be too much of an issue. So we'll take a look at the back here. Uh, we have the HDMI and micro USB here so the top one is the HDMI out if you want to play it on your um, on your television and stuff like that you can just go out to that and then you have the USB for charging it and stuff um, I don't know if we can charge it and use the camera at the same time I know I've been asked this before and um, I'll post a follow-up in the more information section below and uh, we'll open this up 
and we'll swap out the battery. Now it's using the same batteries that we use from the AS100, the MPBX1. So if you have a ton of these lying around, they are going to be backwards compatible. So we'll just sort of slide this in here. And if you're coming from like the AS20 or maybe the AS15 and AS30, there's no more uh, disc tray loading. You just sort of snap in the battery here, this little purple lever. Uh, keeps us in check and we're all good to go. Now this is also how you can access your micro SD card and we'll just sort of pull this out real quick. Now I'm using the SanDisk Extreme Pro and uh, the main reason why I'm using this guy is it's because the properly formatted card, if you're looking to get a card, you want one that writes super fast because the Sony X1000V actually can have a bit rate up to 100 megabits a second. But in all of my searching, I could not find a card that sort of uh, wrote at that speed. It, there's ones that come close to it that will read at 95 megabits a second, but I'm more interested in the write speed. So that's one thing you gotta be careful of. The usually display speed is uh, the read speed, but you want a really fast write speed. So this guy writes at 90 megabits a second, which is pretty close to the max capacity of this guy. And it's pretty much the fastest card I can find on the market. It's also formatted, uh, it's also formatted at XC. Now, if you want to record at their pro mode, uh, the XAVCS, you will need an XC formatted card. And you can switch between MP4s and the XAVC mode. Now, the MP4 is how you're going to get a lot of the more higher frame rates and stuff like that. But really what it comes down to is you're going to want a fast card. You're going to want it to be XC. And you want it to definitely write over 60 megabits a second if you're getting this camera. But ideally, if you want to get the max use out of this camera, you want something that's closer to 100 megabits a second. And I'm going to suggest this guy. I'll put more information in the comments below. Uh, not the comments, the more information section below this on um, where you can find this card. And if we find a better card, I'll put that in there too. And it doesn't have to be 64 megabits. Also, you don't have to worry about the U3 or the U1 or the Class 10. Basically, Class 10 writes up to a certain speed. U1 writes up to 10 megabits a second. U3 writes up to 30 megabits a second. But like I said, we need something that writes closer to 100 megabits a second. So even if it is U3, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best case. The main things you want to look out for is XC and make sure it writes fast. So we'll put this guy back in. You want the sort of screen graphics facing towards the LCD screen when you put it in here. And the reason being is uh, you can load this card in both ways because the camera will accept multiple types of micro SD cards. Now Sony has a proprietary type of card. I don't know, normally know too many people who are going to use that just because it is a more expensive card for less space and uh, the performance isn't always uh, better than cards you get on the market. So we'll push this in. Um, all of these things have a sort of rubber coating along the sides here. That way uh, it is completely splash proof. So if you're shore side and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about a little water killing your camera. So um, I don't know if we talked about it, we have the record button on top here. Now the big benefit to this all being on top is that when we take photos and stuff like that, we're not pushing the camera forward like we used to with the AS100. Uh, it's nice and secure here, and it'll make sure the camera rests a lot quicker. Uh, we also have this hold button, so if it's in our book bag or if it's um, in our pocket, we don't accidentally start recording. Uh, on the bottom here, we have a tripod mount. We no longer need the adapter that we used to on the AS100, which is this little piece on the bottom here. Uh, we could actually just mount it to a tripod straight from here, but we do have the option to put that device on there if we ever needed it with this little screw here. Uh, this I thought was our microphone port, but it says it's an external power in, but I don't really know too many external power plugins that are this red thing, but I could be completely wrong. Uh, it could be sort of an AC adapter um, for using external use while recording. Um, but if that's the case, I don't really know where the external mic is. Maybe it's based off this USB, but we'll have to sort of follow up on that right now. Again, it's using the sort of Zeiss lens that we've used in the past. Uh, again, and we also have the the uh, backlit image sensor, which offers really good low light protection. Uh, I'm sorry, low light performance. Um, we tested this out very briefly uh, tonight, and it, it, you know, it wasn't really a big surprise. The Sony cameras have always been great at night, and it continues to be. And uh, that's everything with the body of the camera. Some of the new features that I wanted to talk about were, you know, the steady shot and all that stuff. But maybe we should take a look at all the footage that we recorded. We put this guy on a Phantom 2 today and flew it around. So we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we'll just show what's left here in the box. It's probably nothing too exciting. Um, big complaint is I kind of wish we would stop having these sort of newspaper style manuals. I've, uh, I've been getting... You know, helmet cameras that are much cheaper in quality, but um, offer like printed 
little notebooks. Like having this with me and reading this isn't nearly as useful as something like this little advertising card. If I had a booklet of things that were printed as nice as this and I could flip through it and it was an actual book that I can keep in my backpack, that would be appreciated because this camera has a lot to offer. Uh, you know, we have 4K, we have uh, steady shot, we have GPS. Also, I should mention with the GPS, it's actually controlled through the added remote. So if you if GPS is important, make sure you're getting the bundle that comes with the remote because all of that is basically recorded through the remote and then sent to the device and they kind of work in sync to kind of gather that data. But, you know, all of this information, you're going to need to read through a lot of this and this is just gonna get damaged it has no protection and it just looks like a little piece of newspaper so but yeah um, we have a bunch of stickers uh, Sony's getting much better at their uh, sticker inclusions we have a lot more this time around so if that's important to you you can sort of deck your uh, Sony support out all over um, and then actually we never really went over it but the the X1000V is a is a bit bigger than the AS100 and the AS200. Now the AS200 is identical in size here to the um, to the AS100, which we're using here as a reference. You can kind of see just looking here at the back, just like there's a, it's a bit taller. It's about the same width um, and it's a bit longer in the front. So something to keep in mind. Um, it's probably a good deal heavier, but we'll weigh that at the end here, so. Put that all side. If you actually we have the AZ1 here, so you can get kind of a three side by side sort of scale. You can see the AZ1 is a, is a great companion camera. It doesn't offer the same level of quality as the AS100, 200, or X1000, but uh, it's a great companion. And especially if you have the remote, you can actually use the remote to control five cameras at once. You can sync them all and stuff like that. And using um, Action Cam's new Movie Maker software, if you're filming, I believe this is only available in the MP4 format but you can actually generate an edit of your adventure. So if you get home and you don't really want to spend the time, or maybe you don't have the time to put together your own edit, you can actually use their software and it will build an edit. Um, I don't really know how it works. We've never really used it, but I've seen it demoed. It's pretty cool. So it just takes all your clips. It takes all the highlight moments. It kind of detects when action is happening and stuff like that. And it builds an edit for you. So if, uh, if you need to, you can use the remote and a bunch of cameras and get all the footage together. And you can have Sony do all the work for you, which is pretty cool. So, put these off to the side. Um, what else we got here? Uh, we had the battery in this box, but um, we already put it in the camera for testing purposes. And we're basically just going to get some mounts here, a USB cable. Um, we're not going to get that adapter piece that I was talking about before. Um, we have our sort of adhesive mount. This is what the battery was in. The rest of this box is empty. Our USB micro cable, uh, an, an adhesive curved mount, and this is going to be our this is going to be our mounting plate here, so open this up real quick. It's, it's stuff we've all seen before. This attaches to the bottom, you just clip it into this and you're, uh, you're all set. So you can put these on like a helmet or a car and stuff like that, and then just keep this on here and quickly snap it into what you need. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hop over to our next video. We have a bunch of first impressions with our first day of filming with the FDR X1000V. It includes a bunch of feature looks like the Steady Shot 2.0. We hook it up to uh, to a bike. We go do some downhill riding. We have a bunch of quadcopter footage. We have a bunch of looking at field of view angles, color options, photos, and stuff like that. It's all about the video options there. So click the link you see on your screen now. And we'll hop over there and finish up our clipboard.